The first thing that we're going to do is draw a free body diagram showing the forces that are acting on the barge. We will represent the barge as a dot and then we have the force exerted by the rope in this direction. We know that force has a magnitude of nine, nope, 7,900 newtons. And then this angle here was 18 degrees. Now we have two additional forces. We're gonna have the X component of the force exerted by the water. We're gonna call that Fx. And then we have the Y component of the force exerted by the water. We'll call that Fy. Great, now, once we have drawn the free body diagram showing forces acting on the barge, we're going to want to apply Newton's second law. We will start with the sum of the forces acting in the X direction and set that equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Now, we have to be a little careful because we only want forces acting in the x direction. So it might be useful to actually draw and find the x component as well as the y component, which we will use later. We're gonna just call this x component F1. And just using a little bit of trigonometry, you could see from this right triangle that the cosine of the 18 degree angle would equal the side adjacent which is F1, divided by the hypotenuse, which is F, and that was 7,900 newtons. So if you multiply both sides of that equation by 7,900, you would see that the X component is 7,900 newtons times the cosine of 18 degrees. So that's going to be our first force acting in the X direction. Let's go ahead and write that in. We've got 7,900 cosine of 18, and then the other force acting in the x direction is fx. Notice it's pointing to the left, so we're going to call that a minus fx. And then we set this equal to the mass of the barge, which was 9,500 kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration in the x direction. Now let's pause here and make sure we understand something. The barge is headed straight along the positive direction of an x-axis. So this means that the acceleration in the x direction was the value given. It was that 0.12 meters per second squared. Because it's only moving along the positive x-axis, we will see later that the y acceleration is actually zero meters per second squared. In other words, the barge is not accelerating in the y direction. So for the x, we're gonna fill in that 0.12 and then we're just gonna simplify. On the left side, we've got 7,900 cosine of 18, which is 7513.3 approximately, minus Fx. On the right-hand side, we have 9,500 times 0 0.12, and that's 1140. Now the rest should be easy to solve. You could subtract the 7513, and then divide both sides by negative one. And when you do this, you will find that Fx is equal to 6373.3. And that's going to come out in newtons, of course. We can go back and do a similar analysis for the y direction. Why don't we find the y component of that 7,900 newton force? So we'll call that F2. Looking again at that right triangle, you have the sine of the 18 degree angle is equal to the side opposite of that angle, which is F2, divided by the hypotenuse, which again is 7,900. Multiply both sides by 7,900, and you would see that the y component is 7,900 times the sine of 18 degrees. So now we're just going to look at the forces in the y direction. We have the force that we just deduced, and then we have the other force, which is Fy. Notice that's pointing down, so that's going to be a minus. So let's go ahead and set up another Newton second law, this time in the y direction. We have the sum of the forces in the y direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. We have that positive 7,900 sine of 18, and then minus Fy, and this equals the mass of the barge times the acceleration in the y direction, which you will recall was zero. So 7,900 times the sine of 18 is 2441.2, and then the right-hand side, of course, is zero. We can see very easily here that Fy is that 24. 1.2 and that'll be in newtons. So this is cool. We have the X and Y components of the force exerted by the water. Let's take a look at how we can get the overall magnitude. So the overall magnitude is denoted by this F right here and we have ourselves another right triangle that is built from the X and Y components. Because it's a right triangle we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We know that F squared 
would equal fx squared plus fy squared. If you take the square root of both sides, you would have f is equal to the square root of fx squared plus fy squared. So let's go ahead and plug in the values for fx and fy. There we go. And then when you simplify that, punch it into your calculator, you should get about 68 24 newtons. So this is the correct answer to part A, that is the magnitude of the force exerted by the water on the barge. Next, we go to part B, which wanted the direction relative to the positive x-axis. That's going to be important, whoopsies, of the force on the barge. So we just need the direction and that means we need an angle. There we go. That angle right there. So we're going to get that angle, but then we're going to be careful about something because if you superimpose an x and y axis. Remember the barge would be located right there. So there's the x axis, there's the y axis. Once we find that angle theta, we're going to have to take that theta and add an extra 180 degrees to our answer. This should make sense because if you start at the positive x axis, you'd have to travel 180 degrees to get to that point. Then you'd have to add whatever the value of theta is. So we'll figure out theta and then we'll add 180 degrees to it. Now take a look at that right triangle. You should see that the tangent of that angle theta would equal the side that is opposite, which is the 2441.2, divided by the side that is adjacent, which is the 6373.3. Then to solve for theta, you just do the inverse tangent. So it's going to be the inverse tangent of that ratio. And when you punch that into your calculator, you will see that theta is approximately 21 degrees. And then to get the final answer, we have to add 180 to that. So we'll just do that on the side over here. So the final answer for theta, we'll just call it theta prime, is 21 degrees plus 180 degrees. You'll see that the final angle is 201 degrees. So this is the correct answer for part B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so. Appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.